Good evening, people. Watch them at 65, Lisa Boyce. I'm going to give you the gospel. It's in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Christ shed his blood for all of our sins. Past, present, future. Was buried and rose again on the third day, according to scripture. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 is the basis of salvation. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4 is the reason we're saved, how we're saved, and why we're kept saved. So is Romans. Confess with your mouth the whole nine yards. All of that. It is grace through faith in Christ alone. Not of ourselves, not of works, least any man should boast. It is grace, something we didn't earn, something we don't deserve, that God gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, you and I are whosoever, the key word is believe in him will not perish, but have eternal life. Now, a lot of people want to make this more complicated than what it is. It's not complicated. And I always take it back to the thief on the cross when he recognized Jesus next to him. There had to be some form of belief in him for him to say, when you get to your kingdom, will you remember me? Or when you get to paradise, will you remember me? Because he wouldn't have said that otherwise. And all the Lord did was look at him and say, today you will be with me in paradise. I mean, I don't know why people don't look at that and realize that is only believing. That's it. That thief on the cross should be an example of salvation right there. But a lot of people ignore it. A lot of people ignore it. It is believing in what he already took care of at the cross. How do you come to that? You admit you're a sinner in need of a savior. Now, a lot of people will probably a lot of people will probably say, "Well, he didn't admit that. Well, let's look at it like this. If he had that much in him to ask Christ, will you remember me? Don't you think that had something to do with the fact that he admitted that he was a sinner? If you think about that, because the Lord wouldn't have told him, today you will be with me in paradise. That's a perfect example of salvation. And I always take it back to that because you can't, you can't deny it. And people have tried to deny it over and over and over again. They tried to put a spin on it. And you can't because it's right there. I love that art, that story in that in the Bible in the book of John. The moment you put your faith and trust in Christ Jesus, the moment you accept Christ as savior, not only are you saved, but you are justified by the blood of Jesus. Rapture ready, which is going to happen at any time and if you look at everything that's going on right now, it's all being set up. Why do you think the financial system is messed up right now? Because that's part of the Antichrist's M.O. when he comes on the scene. He's going to fix it. Everything is in line now. And you are justified by the blood of Jesus because, which means you will never ever lose your salvation. You can't lose your salvation. The Holy Spirit will indwell in you. The Holy Spirit will lead you, guide you. The Holy Spirit is your best friend. The Holy Spirit will change you. The Holy Spirit will minister to you the whole nine yards. I had to put that in there. Hope it helps somebody. Right now, Russia's back in the, on the scene. Well, Russia never left the scene. Russia warns the U.S. to stop hostile flights after Black Sea drone collision. They're pretty pissed. 
Russia has warned the United States to cease hostile activity near its border after the dramatic incident involving an American drone over the Black Sea. Ukraine said Wednesday that the episode, the first known direct confrontation between the two superpowers since the war began last year, illustrated the Kremlin's desire to expand the conflict. A Russian fighter jet harassed and then collided with the propeller of an MQ-9 Reaper drone on Tuesday, forcing the U.S. to bring the drone down in international waters, the U.S. military said. So Washington said it was a brazen violation of international law. Oh, but we forgot that um, just the other day, there was a U.S. Fire, fighter jet or uh, nuclear jet or nuclear plane that flew over into Russian territory. So we forgot that, right? But Russia denied its plane came into contact with the drone and accused the U.S. of being to blame for conducting surveillance near its airspace to help Ukraine. We proceed from the fact that the United States will refrain from further speculations in the media landscape and stop making uh, sorties near the Russian borders, the country's ambassador to the U.S. said after his meeting at the State Department. We perceive any actions involving the use of American weapons and military equipment as openly hostile. Ambassador Antony and, and Natalie Antonov said, according to a statement published on the embassy's telegram on Wednesday. Antonov insisted that the Russian fighter jets didn't hit the American drone or use their weapons. He echoed earlier assertions from Moscow's defense ministry, which said it had scrambled planes to intercept the drone after it intruded into an area near Crimea that Russia had declared off limits for the purposes of what is called its special military operation. The unacceptable actions of the United States military is the close proximity to our borders, our cause for concern. Antonov said, they gather intelligence which is subsequently used by the Kiev regime to strike at our armed forces and territory. He added that Russia does not seek confrontation. But the incident highlighted that the growing tension over the war in Ukraine with the Kremlin eager to dissuade the U.S. from maintaining his support for Kiev. The clash was a sign of Putin's readiness to expand the conflict zone with the involvement of other parties. Putin was losing on the battlefield, so constantly raising the stakes in hopes of a change in circumstances, he said. The U.S. summoned Antonov to the State Department over the incident, spokesman Ned Price told reporters Tuesday, to convey strong objections to this unsafe and professional, unprofessional intercept. So we'll see what happens here. Now, in the meantime... And this just came out about two minutes ago. No, not even, maybe about 10 minutes ago, I say. The UN nuclear watchdog, now listen to this, has just reported that 2.5 tons of uranium is missing from a Libyan state. So the finding is a result of an inspection originally planned for last year that had to be postponed because of the security situation in the region and was finally carried out yesterday. 
According to the confidential statement, International Atomic Energy Agency Chief Rafael Grassi, the IAEA inspectors found that 10 drums containing approximately 2.5 tons of natural uranium in the form of uranium ore concentrate or UOC previously declared by Libya as being stored at that location were not present at that location. So it's missing. Now, the agency would not carry out further activities to determine the circumstances of the uranium, uranium's removal from the site, which it did not name and where it is now. The loss of knowledge about the present location of nuclear material may present a radio, uh, radiological risk as well as nuclear concerns. You think? It said adding that reaching the, the site required complex logistics. So they got 2.5 tons of uranium missing. They don't know where it is. I can think of probably Iran. Just think it out loud. In 2003, Libya, under the leader uh, Mamou uh, Gaddafi, re renounced its nuclear weapons program, which had obtained centrifuges that can enrich uranium as well as design information for a nuclear bomb, though it made little progress towards the bomb. Libya has had little peace since 2011. NATO backed uprising ousted Gaddafi. I vaguely remember that. Since 2014, political control has been split between rival Eastern and Western factions, with the last major bout of conflict ending in 2020. Now, again, where is this uranium? Somebody has it. But they claim they don't know where it is. Hmm. So I'm going to link this in the description box. There's another um, uh, article about it as well here on um, Yahoo has it as well. It says the IAEA confirmed that the site was not under the control of the Libyan government. The mystery emerged as Libya continues to rebuild its society following the body of a bloody civil war in 2020. Reuters noted that political control had been split between the Eastern and Western fascists. factions, but still no one knows where this uranium is. That's a lot of uranium. 2.5 tons of natural uranium is missing from Libya. And I'm going to link this in the description box. If anything else uh, happens to come up, I will be back on. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow here or in the air.